Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity, bottom left hand corner. We've got Blue Zerg Striker, who is absolutely fantastic. We got Semi starting the upper right hand corner as the. I'm not sure what to call that color. Olive green? Olive. I think olive is the official name for it as well. Chicagoland is coming up in one week. Apparently, Julia will be there. With Julia in the mix, I would not be shocked if he will take it. Julia, aka Blackman PL. Um. Competitive guy, like sometimes uh, in, I, I've noticed this amongst StarCraft players. Artosis is amongst them. G5 is amongst them. In Control actually was classically this way, where when they're in competitive mode, they can be very uh, BM and aggressive and angry, as many people are. I've been that way myself in time, uh, believe it or not. I'm very, I got very frustrated in BM and whatever when I would play Counter Strike, the anger and the ferocity. But then once you're like outside of competitive mode, it's uh, very nice people, and I would. My presumption is that Julia fits into that category. I know he has had trouble um, in BSL tournaments because of BM and whatnot, but I'm wondering if that uh, is in fact the case. All the inter on the, when he's kind of relaxing on Twitch chat, I've seen nothing but good things. Be sure to follow him on Twitch. By the way, he does a lot of streaming, and also I uh, uh, out to Twitch. Anyway, I'm excited. This is honestly, I think, the marquee matchup of well, maybe this. I've got Doodle. Uh, who do I have? Doodle versus Pandora, which could be a good game, but I think this is the marquee matchup of the winners uh, of the upper bracket round two. Um, although Gypsy versus Cross was played here too, wasn't it? Or Gypsy versus Gypsy game might have been. Anyway, point being, this is a really fun matchup. Semi, who actually knocked out Artosis, by the way, at Chatline 2, which we made a name for himself. And one thing I loved, something that I, I can't remember who said it. It might have been Gypsy, actually, who potentially said it. No, it was Jayun who said it. He's like, Semi is a dangerous player to play against because he doesn't care who you are, he's going to bring his A game. And I love that about him. Uh, really awesome dude. I actually stayed with him for the first chat LAN as part of the group of guys that were part of uh, Airbnb group, and it was just fun to chat StarCraft with him. Um, one downside to that, I made sure not to do that as following because I was like, I can't afford to stay up to 3 a.m. and then cast 12, hours the or 12 to 14 hours the next day again. Uh, but he's just, he's a good dude, and I like hanging out with him. Um, Striker, by the way, setting up for a three hatch before he has, but he's really improved his play over the last year and is a strong contender across the board. And he's one of those guys that I think he's like pushing his way into the upper echelon. Going for two cannons, this is Matt, so cross position two cannons is very, very respectful of Striker Zergling Micro. And maybe a bit of an overcommitment here, but making he and this is a statement, okay, I want to go into a macro game and not have to worry about it. So one Zergling gonna be able to crawl up. That might cause Striker to be a little bit more we'll see if he ends up playing more aggressive. What this does do is this puts more taxation on this initial probe to keep scouting information out on the field, even at cross position, because oftentimes with the forge opener, especially when you can take out that probe, it can oftentimes trigger an immediate 973. And Striker's builds, as that is the first thing people will say about Striker, is that his builds are absolutely fantastic. They're very, very sharp. One thing I do want to say from Striker is one thing I look out for him. In a, he's going to win one of these, is something I said previous, and it's something I stand by. And I think the one thing Striker just needs to do is he uh, looks like he's going to go ahead to tech to layer and semi able to spot it. Ooh, taking a lot of hits from those Zerglings. Want, still wants to keep eyes. Looks like he's drawing it back right the second. Second hatchery about up, and we already have some drone saturation here at the six o'clock. One thing for Striker, though, part of StarCraft is, is the, I want to call it the variance of play, where if you think about it in poker terms, they're. A lot of the information gathering is, is, okay, what is the range of hands that this guy plays? And you, and you try to disguise your range and get a read on other people's range to know what you're going to toss at them. I, I feel like the same thing applies to StarCraft, where if you know a guy throws out a six pool on occasion, if you know a guy has a random cheese in there, it kind of makes you, if, you, if there's certain, basically by doing certain builds that are suboptimal, it opens up other builds, it makes other builds that are optimal play even stronger and I have a feeling Striker learned that from this because he tried like some sort of pseudo cheese attempt against Jayun and it ended up costing him a little bit in that series in fact Jayun said well I don't really fear uh Striker like I, I don't fear Striker's um off builds and so I'm wondering if Striker is going to spend some time in the off time here building those off builds a little bit in order to 
open up that, that variance range, because I think that is the only thing holding him back right this second. I think if he had a little bit more of a variance range, he would be the most feared player in North America right this second, and I will stand by that statement. Um, Anyway, Zealots moving out, going to go ahead and try to clear Zerglings out in the front. As I say that, Semi, a fierce competitor, Citadel of Adun drops in Overlord range, spots it, went ahead and dropped the Stargate at the natural expansion, and this might give Striker the... I don't think this gives Striker... He should know the timing of this, but I don't think this off-position Stargate is going to fool Striker here. In the meantime, he's going to go ahead and drop that fourth hatchery upon the lack of pressure, dropping it before that Spire is even up. And can kind of get away with that. Ooh, the, the Dragoon. I noticed there was a Dragoon built. But Semi sneaking it underneath to try to get a faster Overlord kill. He's going to be able to track that out on the field. And that might open up, because of the timing of the Spire, might open up an additional Overlord kill. So first Corsair going to make its way out. Can just go ahead and slam that Overlord. And we'll still probably have time to go ahead and get additional scouting out. So that'll be the Overlord kill name, and we can see that this is just going into defensive hatchery style, which Citadel, honestly, so cross position, Striker's going to be able to just have a macro feast out of this. Already at three, 31 workers. The question will be, will Semi, oh, will Semi, will Semi sense it? It's hard to say that for some reason. Will Semi sense the situation? Nice alliteration all the way across the board. And be able to get, oh man, nice defense there by Striker already. Pushing the Corsair back where he's not able to get eyes. A second Corsair making its way back to the main. I'm wondering if the second Corsair can make its way out on the field a little bit. Because now Semi, he's honestly in a scenario a little bit. Both players supply block right here. Um, where he needs to kind of, he needs to be a little bit more aggressive in taking his third. Because Striker is opting to go for a much more defensive macro, fast macro uh, style right here. Does he upgrade? I thought I saw Burrow upgrading for a half second there. Um, Scourge getting wiped out, also keeping an eye on the unit count, trying to see how many gateways were plopped down. It looks like it's just two gateways, but Semi can play a lighter gateway count and go ahead and run out and potentially go ahead and grab a third as long as he gets that pylon in position and has the, the healthy Corsair count. He needs to have, he needs to feel safer on the forward Corsair count with some additional support, but it's going to, it's going to be a hard read in the meantime. And I think Striker is going to be able to go ahead and get away with this uh, sit back macro a lot situation, particularly across position, which is going to put Simi in a bind because as he's looking to go ahead and potentially grab that third, there's potentially already going to be units out in position to go for kind of a soft contain. And striker soft contains are absolutely brutal to try to break out of that. Honestly, I think out of all of his play, that tends to be some of his strongest. Range upgrading, we're going to see seven gateways. Is that right? One. So five, six, seven, eight gateways out on the front. So full eight from semi to try to press out. But again, I'm concerned that this is going to be going up against an equivalent fact, uh, equivalent hatchery. So we got the six hatch in the background. And potentially we're going to have lurkers out in the front uh, by the time he's making the way out. The Scourge trying to press through. And I think one trying to get some assault on the Corsair, but also wanted to get a look at the Corsair count to see whether it was going to be a faster move out or not. So we got a pot, just a pocket full of units looking out, checking things out in the meantime. Plus one weapons is finished. Zelt leg speed is queued up. Armor queued up as well. We already have the robotics facility out on the way. But right now, Striker has evened up the work account. He's within 11 supply, and he's going ahead and grabbing bottom right. And my concern is that Semi's building this large army not to go for a punch kill, but to go for an established additional base. And... Once all is said and done, unless he has it in situation at cross positions to go for a punch kill, uh, it's going to be rough. We'll see. Uh, that's my read on the situation, at least thus far. 20 supply lead, though, for Semi. He does have eight gateways, which is going to allow him to surge. Striker, I believe with the Scourge, did get a nice activity, honestly, with the Corsair keeping the Scourge, or forcing the Scourge to remain active out on the map. This Zergling has been patrolling at that 12 o'clock forever. Hydalus making the way out, trying to press that off. They want to make sure that they're not making the way to bottom right. We already have it looks like a drone trans or sorry uh, sorry drones thought this was all drones but drones and hydralis making their way bottom right but you also have this hydralis force starting to pocket its way out towards that natural expansion to maybe morph into lurkers uh, on the forward front one thing striker will do is just rather than going for the flat front defense will often go for a softer contain right now he, his army is a little bit scattered and striker is making his way towards that 12 o'clock who forced to 
a little bit of bad discipline forced to drop a side storm that didn't get a lot of hide risk in the space of this and it looks like he is going to go ahead and move up to grab that 12 o'clock but that bottom right is already up and functional in the meantime and semi needs to recognize that that bottom right is up and go for a kill attack right this second while he has that supply lead so he's got 30 supply here there's a little bit of a zergling backstab that could make its way through as well semi is moving forward on the map i don't see any lurkers in position some lurkers morphing here at the six o'clock might be a little bit too late but striker doing a good job of throwing in just a, a pocket full of units here to try to draw striker back and yeah he's losing an overlord here and there but what this is doing is this, this is also buying him time and keeping semi back so yeah semi gets the 12 but look how late this 12 is in comparison to strikers fourth although that fourth not yet saturated starting to make his way here bottom left we have a hand uh, it looks like a good grouping of lurkers there already 20 supply leads still and more units streaming their way across the scourge going to be able to detect that 12 o'clock base and semi yeah continually drawing back again because of just a little pocket of troops starting to threaten this i think what he's hoping he's doing right at the stage is uh is threatening and forcing a larger troop composition where's the observe the observer a little bit slow on the rear and striker starting to position units to go for an envelop this is part of the, the hard problem of being at cross positions like this dropping side storms just on lurkers allowing the hydrals to go up and get an attack and honestly not that much yeah not free but very very cheap and striker holding this ramp position absolutely forever and just going ahead and moving in quick replacement and yeah, there's some side storm, but just a single side storm over a lurker. Striker's happy to go for this exchange. His 20 supply lead, another observer pickoff, and that's going to delay things further from Semi. Semi now backing out, but now that fourth just coming online. This bottom right hand base has been online forever. Striker has the worker lead, and you're probably potentially there's that counter attack. You might be able to yeah, going to get another high templar. Striker's been fantastic about picking those high templar off, and now you're going to see that troop surge from Striker and uh, a really strong map control counterattack, and you can see as yeah starting to move out on the map he can go ahead and grab a fifth he can start assaulting additional bases he can start hunting down semi's army and semi has to be very very wary looks like some lurkers are getting caught midfield here but one or two lurkers fine against a single observer army semi really having trouble positioning in the space of this Striker trying to hunt down, and again, just single side storms on single lurkers right this second, which isn't the best. It's not the trade he's looking for, but this is great from Semi, able to find those lurkers in open field undefended without the hydro support. So Striker going to go ahead and back out. The Corsair is also staying active, and able to clear a lot of vision, which is going to force Striker into a much more defensive slot. He's done a good job macroing. So 12 o'clock base is up, doing okay. Still the single observer out in the front. So he needs to be he needs to be very very careful predicting that there's a nice side storm underneath observer takes a few hits does escape with a bit of health but able to bleed off a pretty good exchange right there actually able to wipe out a lot of troops and this is what uh jane was talking about uh, semi right there able to get a really nice exchange all of a sudden he's popped up in supply and after doing some nice damage he's really cleared out vision counter oh this is actually a big moment here is there, so we'll we'll try to keep an keep an eye here on this army but the zerglings able to clear out the probe top left as semi trying to create a wedge here towards the six o'clock between the bottom right a little bit of side storm in between i think striker still has plenty yeah the lurkers spread is pretty decent but this is a lot of dragoons though and not enough lurkers honestly so might be able to press his way in and wipe out the six and get a victory here very nice play yeah i don't think striker has enough here 40 supply lead the Archon needs to get to the front. The Zerglings can just be walked back. A couple of Hydrals coming from the rear. But what Semi can do, honestly, if he can just get that Lurker to the front to clear these Zerglings, is he can just turn... Uh, the Side Storm works as well. He can just turn around and attack bottom right now. And it looks like he is, in fact, shifting to engage to do precisely that. There's already a big Lurker field in the way. If he moves, uh, it looks like he's going to go ahead and try to drop that Nexus to the mineral. Only some Zerglings are making the way in to go ahead and clear that out. I don't believe well okay an observer picked off so semi getting stymied right there great play a beautiful side storm clearing out most of the zerglings so that is well is it going to save it these are are these adrenal upgraded zerglings i think the the hive is finished yeah it looks like it's hard to tell okay yeah they're adrenal upgraded you gotta give him a second to let him do the tack 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 
for a minute to get full vision. But so Semi, uh, I, I want to say Striker with a strong defense there. Striker now sitting at fourth. Four, uh, fourth base coming up from Semi, putting him in an okay position if he can saturate it pretty rapidly. We're moving into more late game Zerg. Nine o'clock location going to go up for Striker. It can be very, very challenging as a Protoss going into the late stages as you really need to, especially on Citadel where it's so spread, where you need to start going robotics a little bit faster than usual, I would argue, on other maps, just to be able to kind of punish uh, and have some splash damage in between here, because right now, yeah, soon, especially because we got Plague coming up, and a good Plague with the Adrenal Upgraded Zerglings, or even a Defiler Swarm with the Adrenal Upgraded Zerglings, these bases can drop very, very rapidly, and in the War of Attrition, especially with large open fields where you have to try to find that Zerg Armly, Army, there's a lot of opportunity to get plagued here. And Striker, I think, already on the prowl to do just that. He's got a Defiler and a group of Zerglings trying to hunt down that army, and find positioning to drop a big Plague. Is he going to find it right there? Okay, sorry. Plague just, I think, Striker a little bit early. Thought Plague was finished. Wasn't quite there. But is already in position. Semi wedging down here at the 6 o'clock. He's not going to have a good opportunity with that Dark Swarm. He's got... He does have a good amount of Zealots, but I don't think he has the upgrade advantage. He has 1-1 one, one versus 1-1. Uh, one, one. A, a few side Storms will help, and there's a nice Plague. But really what he's doing is he's presenting an army that's very, very plagueable. And after that first Plague, Semi, you're going to have to back off right this second and this is where the alarm bells need to go off he is getting it looks like a shuttle upgrade he's also building a dark templar maybe to create some confusion out in the field he's gonna test bottom right once again some zerglings streaming the way across to maybe attack that mineral only that 12 o'clock does have some cannons here we do have that robotics being built we'll see if it's in time we do have a reaver at the natural expansion, so yes, but this is the, the situation where Semi needs to slow crawl his way out, start establishing, and this is where I wish he had done this a little bit earlier. The Zerglin's going to be able to swarm and clear out top left, everything getting canceled right there. So despite being at max supply and being up a considerable amount of supply, Striker's still in an okay position because of that late game hive tech. And because of the map, honestly, a couple units pocketed to go ahead and deny that top left hand base and also force maximum amounts of zealots in here to go ahead and engage one thing for semi is if he is able to clear top left he's able to clear top left and the three o'clock location establish them get the robotics up get the reaver up and cover these bases if he can just make that happen he might if, if he does that right the second i think he'll be in a good long-term position uh, position he's still got the 30 supply lead it's Plague that would really have to equalize this. He might be able to even disrupt that 9 o'clock base. There's not a lot there. But I think he's a little bit more concerned, as you can see the Plague happening here. He's a little bit more concerned about all of the holdings he's got up to defend. These Nexi that just... Nexus? Nexuses? The Nexuses that stick out on the mineral only are particularly vulnerable because there's not a good encapsulation point to kind of funnel the Zerg into a nice explosive range location. In the meantime, Striker's got a base up at his mineral only. Exterior in the bottom left hasn't yet saturated it. Semi, ooh, kind of donating some troops. He doesn't have observers alongside, but starting to push up here at the nine o'clock. I don't know if this is sufficient enough attack force to deal. Maybe if he moves his entire army here to the nine o'clock, might be able to collapse on this. He's gonna find a defiler there. It looks like the defiler was able to drop a plague. Yeah, there's the reinforcements. Gonna go ahead and clear that out. But critically for Semi, in the space of this, he wasn't establishing. He doesn't have top left established. He's got a big mineral. Uh, buffer in Striker has managed to close the supply gap in the space of a lot of those exchanges. So now that three o'clock base going up uh, might even want to drop the pylon and the cannons and the robo while he's still got a padding of everything else before and, and just try to have a lot of zealots out in the field. But Striker recognizing the opportunity, moving out in the map, I think he's going to be able to shut down this three o'clock, which will be absolutely detrimental here to Semi's efforts. He's got some Zergling streaming top left to shut that down as well. One, uh, this is, I, I don't want to criticize Striker for this too much. This does tend to be a problem in this play where he kind of loses, just because it's hard. I think I missed a side storm drop bottom right, by the way, from Semi, which uh, got a good amount of disruption. Semi continue, uh, trying to press into this too many lurkers to make that happen, but Striker oftentimes uh, does end up losing some lurkers out in the field and having them unburrowed. But I, he's got, it's kind of at that stage of the match where it's really hard for uh, for Zerg 
period. You just have so much you're trying to manage late game, and you have all of those control groups. So I don't blame them too much uh, for that because it's honestly, uh, that's just, uh, it's one of those things where it takes programmer level ability to make sure that your, your lurkers are queued up and burrowing forward field, just kind of latently out there and whatnot. But anyway, great spread right there. Speaking of good lurker burrowing, uh, causing a whiff of side storms, a counter plague not catching a lot, but this still is enough of a threat where it's putting semi on the defensive. We have a Dark Templar in the mix. I love actually seeing the Cannon Dark Templar mix in as well. And Semi, yeah, just staging back. And I think he's definitely recognized he's kind of in the more shell territory. The big problem for Semi right now is this is a wide... He doesn't have Weavers out here at the 3 o'clock yet. He doesn't have upper left secure. He has his army, but it's kind of pinned in between the mineral only here at his main base and that three o'clock location there's a lot of lurkers in between clever maneuver though staging the reavers on the high ground in between to try to negate that exact problem ends up side storming his reavers a little bit though which he didn't want to have there's the dark swarm striker trying to shut this down before it becomes a problem and you can see already the situation has been nice with the shuttle that's probably why he prioritized the the reaver speed here but doing a good job of moving in the problem for semi in the space of this is even though he's holding the three o'clock he still doesn't have the rest of this map and going one fourth versus three fourths that's still a zerg advantage overall and right now he's and it looks like a lot of drones being uh gonna saturate that bottom right so basically striker can go ahead and take top left and as long as he continually drops plagues and negate some of these shuttle drops he'll be in an okay position some scourge moving up Shuttle getting caught. Striker can go ahead and engage some plague units, and you can see how quickly they melt, especially against nearly full upgrades on the opposite end. Looks like he's actually got an upgrade advantage right this second. So Semi getting caught in all forward fields, and now this mineral only becoming almost a bit of a liability. We have some Archons out in the forward field to try to help cope with all of this, but there's the swarm starting to move out for Striker at all positions. Dark Swarm and a Plague here at the 3 o'clock location. No Weaver in place to help provide it. And these Zerglings might... Honestly, they could take down that Nexus before... Is If he Focus Fires this Nexus down, that's going to be a dead Nexus. Even with this few Zerglings here. But it looks like uh, they're not Focus Firing, going after the Probe Lines instead. And also Sunny being drawn into that 3 o'clock location with Lurkers and Reinforcements coming behind. Blanking and Side Storm to take care of the Zerglings. But losing a lot of units as he was trying to walk his way across. Now Striker, with the Supply Lead, has an empty 3 o'clock then he can probably go ahead and move in and counter exchange. And all. And if Semi isn't too careful, Striker can go ahead and do the runaround and ignore the three o'clock and attack that mineral only or even the 12 o'clock in the space of this nice side storm. But Semi recognizing he just doesn't have the economy to keep up. And it was just the, honestly, it was like that three minute span where Semi, if he had just established these bases a little bit earlier, he probably could have taken this match. Uh, but still gave a really good fight to Striker overall. Striker takes game one, however. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for listening.